Hello traders, welcome to your Follow the Bots S&P 500 Daily Market Recap. Hello traders, Bill Durier here with Follow the Bots. Welcome to the Daily Market Recap, a detailed review of the market structure and the key support and resistance levels in the S&P 500 E-mini. Today is Monday, September 2nd, 2013. Having auctioned back up to the transition point at 1670, the prior support level of the upper supply cluster, from which the S&P broke down in mid-August and traded down to 1630. Last week, the S&P pulled back from the retest of the 1670 high after auctioning up to 1667. The market traded back down below the prior week's support and made a new low, auctioning down to 1624, 1626. Using our market structure model of the developing trading range, We had noted that after the market had its climax sell-off back in June and auctioned up above 1654, the S&P consolidated in early July. It was following the five-day consolidation that the S&P auctioned above 1620 and the recovery rally up to the prior multi-year high began. The S&P went on and extended the range modestly above the prior multi-year high. At the start of the breakdown below 1670, the market structure indicated that the support level where the market would most likely build a base of support was down at or near 1620. We have been discussing in our daily recap as well as in our market structure commentary that when a market establishes a new base of support, it is typically a multi-day affair. The market spends an ample amount of time, three to five days is the typical pattern, building a base of support before attempting to rally back up into the prior trading range. When sufficient time is spent at the new low, It allows for the accumulation of new positions, and thus when the market auctions back up into the previous trading range, it is less likely to turn around and reverse as it did during the prior week session. We noted during the prior week session that after the market sold off overnight down to 1630, the market spent no time trading at the low. Thus, the move up, we deemed a short covering rally. The outcome of short covering rallies are that during the pullback, since no new capital entered the market on the move up, there is no support for the market, and price typically trades back through the prior trading range. Last week, when the S&P traded down at or near 1624, the market began developing a base of support. Near-term resistance developed during the sell-off and was located at or near 1644-1646. At Friday's open, the S&P auctioned above micro-support at 1634 and traded up to near-term resistance at 1645-1646. However, late in the day when the market pulled back at or near the micro support level, the selling pressure increased. The S&P traded down initially to 1626, rallied back up at or near what had been support at 1634, but then sold off back down and retested the low prior to Friday's close. After trading down to 1625, the S&P auctioned back up to 1633 
and ended the weekly session approximately 10 points above the low. There were several factors affecting the market during last week's session. The geopolitical unrest and the potential military strike against Syria added a high degree of uncertainty, and therefore we did not expect to see a major rally during Friday's session. Over the weekend, President Obama announced that he would not take military action without first receiving approval from Congress. At the open of Sunday's Globex session, the S&P gapped above Friday's close, traded above minor resistance, and traded up to near-term resistance at or near 16.44. On Monday, as the U.S. markets were closed for the Labor Day holiday, positive economic data out of China and out of Europe contributed to the upbeat sentiment. S&P futures made a minor pullback at or near 16.39 and auctioned back to near-term resistance at 16.44 and went on to make a higher high trading up to 1648 and ending Monday's shortened holiday session at 1647. The next known resistance level above Monday's close is located up at 1654. That was the settlement from last Monday when the market sold down to the recent low. The gap above Friday's close and the positive reaction to the Asian and European data leaves the S&P substantially above last week's support. Ideally, we'd like to see the market pull back and fill the gap at Friday's close before attempting to move higher. Should the market pull back and fill the gap prior to trading up to 16.54, U.S. market participants who were unsure of the market direction at last Friday's close would have an opportunity to get long should price pull back and fill the gap. This would be a positive resolution to the market development that we observed at last week's low. Alternatively, should the market open on Tuesday and continue higher, the positive developments that occurred last week when price pulled back at or near 1620 would be to some degree forfeited as a short covering rally would likely ensue and the S&P may not only trade up to 1654 but may continue on to the prior week's high at 1667 and retest the transitional breakdown point which marks the upper supply cluster at 1670. In the event, the market continues to rally up to the prior high at 1666-1670, the trade opportunity that would be most appropriate would be to sell into the rally. Under those circumstances, we would expect to see the order flow monitor indicate buying interest waning as the market short covers up to the previous high. Should the market pull back and fill the gap at Friday's close, the appropriate trading strategy would be to look to get long on the gap fill, with the expectation that the S&P will auction back up and retest Monday's close at or near 1647-1648 and potentially continue up to the prior Monday's close at 1654. That concludes our daily recap for this Monday, September 2nd, 2013. If you would like to follow our real-time commentary, visit us on the web at www.followthebots.com. Set an auto alert at the key support and resistance levels 
noted in today's broadcast. And tune in to our live commentary as we describe in detail the market development as price auctions up to the key support and resistance levels we describe today. We begin our broadcast every morning prior to the U.S. markets open. Join us some morning. We'll look forward to seeing Follow the Bots offers a completely new approach for traders. Follow the Bots provides you with tools that will allow you to trade with the bots and not against them. To learn more, take a tour of www.followthebots.com.